Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your boy, Titan, and in today's story, I'm going to be telling you about the time my dad kidnapped me. Just as a disclaimer, I don't want you guys thinking I have some sort of crazy, psycho, serial killer dad who's going to come and murder me in my sleep. Um, growing up, he was a bit violent, and sometimes he could be very aggressive, too, but today, as I know him, he is very, like, kind and generous and just really, really caring. Um, our relationship isn't the greatest, so I don't see him a lot of the time, but when I do get to talk to him and when I do get to see him, it's always very positive. But all of the nasty and negative things I've seen him do growing up is the reason why our relationship isn't, like, the greatest. But before I get into the story, I'm going to need you guys to give this video a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to become part of the Thai fam, and ring that notification bell so you can get notified every time I post. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and on Snapchat at T-Y-E underscore T-U-N. And sorry if I seem a bit off or out of it, it's just that this story is a little bit triggering and it's a little hard for me to tell. This is like my fifth time trying to record this thing. So just bear with me. But with all that being said, let's get into today's story. So this story takes place when I was about 8 years old. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure how old I was, but I do want to say I was around 8-ish. And during this time, my parents had already split up, so during the weekdays, I would stay with my mom, and then every weekend, I would stay with my dad. So let me tell you guys a little bit about how it was growing up with my dad in the house. My dad was very nice and kind to the kids and to the outside world. So all of our neighbors and everybody in the neighborhood thought like my dad was like this super cool, caring, nice guy. But inside of the house, when him and my mom would argue, it'd be so scary. I don't want to go into super detail about everything, but when he was mad, he would throw things, break things, he would say the nastiest stuff to my mom. Now I never seen him hurt my mom, but I have seen him grab her and threaten her and say just like the worst things to her. Um, when he was angry, he was just... He was just the monster when he was angry. Just the monster. But people on the outside would never see that side of him. It would only happen inside of the house. So every time like my friends came over, they loved him. My brother's friends loved him. Everyone respected him in the neighborhood. They um, just never got to see that side of him, I guess. And another thing that made me feel uncomfortable is because I am gay, growing up was kind of hard because I always knew that I was. And sometimes my dad would say things that were very negative towards the LGBTQ community and it would make me feel like unwanted and worthless. Um, yeah. But basically that's how it was growing up with him in the house and then eventually my mom and dad split up so I would stay the weeks at my mom's and then like I said I would go to my dad's house on the weekends. Now going to my dad's house on the weekends was surprisingly pleasant. Um, every time I was there I had a really good time. He never had any sort of aggressive or he never showed any sort of aggression or like violent behavior while I was at his house on the weekends. But sometimes he would still say negative things towards like LGBTQ people. Like if we saw someone walking on the street that was gay or that seemed to be gay, uh, my dad would say something negative about them, which made me feel bad. So even though I was having a good time, every time a moment like that happened, it would make me feel uncomfortable. 
So the day that this all happened was on a Sunday and I remember because I had just spent the weekend at my dad's house and it was Sunday so he was taking me back home to my mother. And I remember being in the back seat of the car and my dad was driving. Um, he had called my mom and he was letting her know that he was on his way to drop me off. Now for some reason they got into an argument. I don't know what for. I don't know what it was about. But I do remember my dad like screaming and cussing my mom out and like threatening her and all this stuff and it was really really scary. And I was in the back seat and I started just like praying. I was like, oh my god, I just want to go home. I just really wanted to go home. I had closed my eyes and I was like, please God, just let me out of this car. Like, I just want to go home. I want to go back to my mom's house. I don't want to be around him when he's angry. He's really, really scary when he's angry. And it was so scary and traumatizing just like listening to him on the phone, yelling and being super angry. And I remember we came to this red light and he suddenly hung up on, hung up the phone on my mom through his phone in the passenger seat. And I remember looking out the window and I was just like, oh my God, like, what is he about to do? Like, I just want, I hope he takes me home. <sighs> I just want him to take me home so bad. So at this point, we're still driving to my mom's house. And I don't know if something like set him off or he remembered something that triggered him, but all of a sudden he starts speeding. And I don't mean 15 or 20 miles over the speed limit. He was going like, oh my God, he had to be going like, it felt like we were going 200 miles per hour. Like, I was so scared. I thought he was going to kill us. I genuinely thought he was speeding up to crash us into something to kill us. So now I'm in the back seat. My heart is beating so fast. I'm looking out the window. Everything is going by so fast you could barely make out what the objects are that we were passing. My dad was like dead silent and I was just sitting there fearing for my life. Like, can you imagine being eight years old thinking that you're going to die at eight years old? Eventually we make it to my mom's neighborhood. My dad drives like a psycho, drives up to our house and pulls into the driveway like super duper fast. My mom is outside and she starts walking up to the car. And at this moment, I'm looking at her and I'm like, oh my God, thank God. Um, home, I can get out of the car. I start unbuckling my seatbelt to get out of the car thinking that I'm going to be like home. Like I'm, I'm thinking I'm safe. My mom gets about a foot away from the car and I remember her saying, give me my son, give me my son. And I guess that triggers my dad. So as I'm reaching for the handle to get out of the car, my dad locks the door, puts the car in reverse, speeds out of the driveway and drives down the street. And I have no idea where we're going. My mom, I was looking out of the window, looking at my mom and she looked distressed like she looked like she just lost me like she just lost her baby and at this moment I was terrified because like I said my dad had a history of being kind of violent and super aggressive so I had no idea what he was planning on doing I don't know where we were going I had no idea so I start crying like majorly crying and my dad is like ignoring me totally when I tell you we were in that car for like Ever. It had to be like three hours sitting in that car. Mind you, my dad only lived 30 minutes away from where my mom lived. We were in the car for like three hours driving around. Fast, mind you. Like, all over the place. I had no idea where we were going or what he was planning on doing. I thought he... I honestly thought he was going to try, like I said, to crash the car into something because the way he was driving was just insane. So I I really thought I was going to die that day. I swear I thought I was going to die that day. And this is so stupid, but I remember um, trying to find something to write on. I was trying to find like a pencil or something in the backseat of the car knowing he didn't have any like pencils or anything in the back seat and um I was trying to find like a piece of paper something to write with and I was going to write the words like help me um on a piece of paper and I was going to hold it to the window and hopefully somebody seen it to get me out of the car <sighs> I don't know 
And I remember just pleading to God. And I was just like, please, please, please get me back home. I just want to go back home to my mom. I just want my mom. Oh, my goodness. And then I noticed that we were in my grandmother's neighborhood, um, his mother's neighborhood. And he had drove up to her house and he parked in front of her house. And as soon as he parked the car and unlocked the doors, the only thing I could think of in that moment was to run. So that's what I did. I opened up the car door and I ran as fast as I could. And for a short moment, like three to five seconds, he was chasing me and then he just stopped and walked back to uh, my grandmother's house and let me just run. Now, I didn't know the neighborhood that well at all, actually. I just knew her street, the street behind her, and then a little bit of the area behind that street. So I knew like three streets. I had no idea where I was, not enough to run home. I could have gotten lost very, very easily. But I ran as far as I knew, if that makes sense. So I just, I ran as far as I could until things started to look unfamiliar and then I just stayed there. And I sat there for a while. I was standing next to some abandoned building. There were bums walking past me, very sketchy people walking past me, and I was sitting there like scared for my life, but I felt safer there than I did near my dad. And that's that's pretty sad. And something told me to go to my grandmother's house. So, after about, I, I must have been there for an hour. After about like an hour, I started walking back to my grandmother's house where my dad was. And I was walking so slow to go back to my grandma's house because I just did not want to be near my dad. And um, I remember thinking like, I don't have a choice. I have to go back. If I stay out here, who knows what will happen to me. So let me just go back. And it, I didn't want to. And when I got to my grandmother's house, before I could even get to her house, actually, there were all these police cars surrounding her house. There was all these officers that rushed into her house. They grabbed my dad, arrested him, arrested him, and I remember them pulling him out of the house in handcuffs. And I was just like, I was, I was happy because the cops were there, but I was scared at the same time and really frightened because I didn't understand what was going on I guess. Then one of the police officers had gotten me. They asked me if I was okay and if I was fine. I told them that I was good. They called my mom and my mom had came to pick me up. But while I was waiting for her to come get me, the police had me wait at my cousin's house across the street. Across the street from my dad's mom, my grandmother. I had cousins and I had to wait over there for my mom to come get me. And then finally when my mom came to get me, I remember my grandmother coming outside and she was cussing my mom out. She was just like going off on my mom, calling her all types of names. <sighs> and I remember just thinking like, oh my gosh, like this side of my family is toxic, my dad's side is a little bit toxic and I didn't want anything to do with them. I just wanted to go home with my mom. Um, she took me home and then that was pretty much that. That day somebody bailed my dad out of jail so he was like walking around again. I think he called my mom and they got into another like argument but that was the moment I was like I can't, I don't want anything to do with like my dad anymore and ever since that day our relationship has been like not the greatest of course like now that I'm older I forgive him for everything he's like done but I think because that moment was so traumatizing um, and he's done more stuff after after the day he kidnapped me he's done crazy stuff he's broken into our back door he was spying on us through our living room window at nighttime um, just all sorts of crazy. He keyed my mom's car, slashed her tires. Just all sorts of crazy things that made me not want to be associated with him and not want to be around him because I was truly, I was honestly scared of him. 
I'm not scared of my dad now, but I, I just, it's like really hard for me to form some sort of connection with him because of everything he did to me. But that's pretty much the whole story. To this day, I do talk to him like very rarely, like once every couple months. Um, very, very rarely. If you guys want to hear more stories about my dad, I will think about telling you. I don't really know because I don't like talking about my dad. So um, if you do want to hear more stories about him, let me know in the comment section down below. But on a more positive note, I do have new merch that came out. I'll put it like right here on the screen. I'll only show this one hoodie that I'm really, really proud of. It is a um, Just Keep Smiling hoodie that I created myself. It says Just Keep Smiling on the back. And then it has a smiley face on the front. I think it's appropriate for this video. Um, go ahead and get this if you want it. It comes in different colors. I'll put the link to my merch um, store down below in the in the description and I'll also like put like a little clicky thing somewhere in this video so yeah thank you guys so much for listening to my story I hope some of you found this relatable um, all I can say is just keep smiling things will get better I don't know I really don't have really good advice for this because I'm still kind of going through it myself so if you have any advice for me let me know in the comment section down below I love all of you guys, and I will talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye.